All right, Shockmaster so fans, another re-review from my previous channel. This one's called Headless Eyes. What the hell's that all about? Let's check it out. My, my eye. Our movie starts with a guy breaking into a woman's apartment. He's a thief. She promptly stabs him in the eye with a spoon. Clearly some time has passed and our, our guy there, Arthur, is now missing an eye. To make up for it, he collects eyes from other people. So one night he's out wandering around and this couple is in a bar or something having a drink. And they see him peeping through the window. It's an eyeball. He ends up following them to their house and knocks on their door. Wow. Look who's there. Naturally, they let him in. Come on in. Harry, it's our man from the window. Harry, you remember our man in the window? <laughs> my, my, yes. I'm Harry Silver. And this is... Oh. Never let strange window peepers into your house, especially if they're carrying hammers. Anyway, the next day or sometime later, he's out on the street and his hand is bleeding. And some pretty girl notices his hand is bleeding and says, I'll help you. No, 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 I don't think so. Oh, there's no action out here, man. Come on, we could both use a drink. Come on. These stupid people are making it way too easy for our guy. Little Miss Helper gets a knife in her. He leaves her dying in the bathtub. The newspaper tells us that he's been busy. The eye killer has slain 14. Anyway, there's a reporter at Ladies one of the dead women's houses. Christopher, where she's going to be carried for the last time from her home in a casket. Apparently they had a funeral in the living room. Standing around me are people who knew Miss Vaughn and some who are merely the curious. I think this 15. is the cop. Are there any theories about uh, what he's been doing with the eyes? God knows, some kind of pervert, demented, I don't know. Mm. Do you think there's any reason why this time he only took one eye? Look, we told all you guys three days ago, something or somebody must have scared him off. Anyway, he leaves that reporter scene and uh, heads onto the roof and kills somebody else. And then scoops out her eyeball. I this movie has its crazy Ralph character. I know who did it. I who did it, old lady? I know who did it. I know who did it, old lady. And then he finds another woman to choke. Scoops out her eyeball too. Dude is hearing voices and running around like an idiot all throughout New York City. Well, later on, he's digging a grave or something, and wouldn't you know what? A cop showed up and caught him. Right. But you know something? You just twisted me into a big fat promotion. You know what? There's 2,000 cops out looking for you. They got computers working on you. Oh, well, this cop is dumb as just as everybody else is in New York City, apparently. Offers a guy a cigarette, which gives our killer the advantage.
Well, he's been using his eyeballs to make art. Rather frightening, but but I like them. How did you do it? It's a long and difficult process. We then spend several minutes of screen time as he stalks this pretty girl walking the street. I get the feeling there weren't any permits for this movie. Well, the Roman runs off into a meat locker somewhere and he follows her. film so you assume that uh, she's going to get the best of him but nope once again he goes in for the eyeballs Then he wanders around in the meat locker bit, and it's not quite clear, but I think we're led to believe that he couldn't get out and he froze to death. Alright, let's talk about Headless Eyes. Now, this is a movie that I taped. I rented it from a a uh, grocery store called Red Owl in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, back around 1986 or so. And um, it's one of those movies that I actually did watch a little bit of. A lot of those movies back then I used to just tape, record them with the intention of watching them later on, which often I didn't. But I think I watched this one because, or at least I watched the beginning of it, because I remember that opening scene where he gets his eye gouged out and he just keeps repeating over and over again, my eye, my, my eye. And they keep looping this same little... 10 second audio bit over and over and you hear it over and over throughout the film too it just shows up my eye oh my eye over and over 35 years later this film does not escape me that line is still in my head constantly seen the film a few times over the years but it's still that line just never goes away my eye you watch it too it'll be stuck there i guarantee you so anyway uh, some time passes, he loses his eye. He's like a criminal. He was breaking into this woman's apartment, and the woman hit him with a, sp with a spoon in his eye. So he's missing an eye now. He has an eye patch. So in order to, uh, I guess, get revenge, he's got some... some he's, he's, he's screwed up in the head. But he ends up uh, killing women and stealing their eyes. Uh, and then he takes their eyes home, and he um, hangs them up on strings. And he ha he's like an artist, and he makes all kinds of art with the eyes. And that's what happens. Now, the police in New York City are baffled. They can't understand what the what's going on with this eye killer. Who is killing these women and why is he taking their eyes? But that's what happens in this movie. So, um, throughout the movie, he just kills more people, steals their eyes. He stalks some women. Um, he complains. He spins around in the streets. He's, he hears voices. He's crazy. Uh, ultimately, near the end, he chases another woman down. They end up in a meat locker somewhere. Um, and he kills her, takes her eyes out, and then apparently he locked himself in, and I think we're led to believe that he froze to death, and then we find him the next morning, and uh, he, he's dead. There you go, kind of like Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining, although quite a different film. Anyway, uh, that's Headless Eyes. There's no nudity in this movie. It's a very short film. It's only like uh, 78 minutes long. It is not a good film by any means. In fact, some of the dialogue is crazy. Now, what, what I was laughing my ass off when... He was peeping on that couple in the restaurant, just looking at them, and they were kind of looking at him, kind of making fun of him a little bit. He ends up following them home, knocks on their door, and naturally they let him in. He's like, oh, you're the guy from the window. Come on in. You want a drink? Harry, you remember the guy from the window? And he's carrying a hammer in his back and knocks them out, kills them. Do not let hammer people into your house, especially if they've been peeping on you. That's headless eyes. Anyway... Um, if you look on IMDb, actually, you'll find that the director of this movie, whose name uh, is it like uh, Baterman or something like that, uh, Kent, ba Kent Bateman, he, um, I believe he's the father of Jason Bateman, actually. Um, he actually left a comment on uh, 
IMDb about making this movie and such. He left a comment there. It was kind of cool. So anyway, he clearly admits that it was low budget, which it was, but they did the best they could. There you go. I did not recognize anybody in this movie, although the star, Bo Brunden, does have a picture on IMDb, um, although I didn't click it to see what else he's done. But anyway, that is it. Again, I didn't read this this time, but I seem to remember from the last time I watched this that Ken Bateman is, in fact, Jason Bateman's father, and he directed Headless Eyes. So there you go. Check it out. Leave some comments. You can get this DVD from Full Moon Grindhouse. The quality is not very good. It looks like it's ripped from a VHS tape, and it probably was. Uh, and you can get this pretty cheap because of that. It's only like $12.99 or so, just like Dream Maniac, which I reviewed yesterday. Check it out. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think about Headless Eyes. My eye. My eye. My, my eye.